back. Um, we are going to be looking at the last math that we need to do for the chapter, which is called changing concentrations of a solution. So imagine that you already have a solution made. There's a stock solution um, that already exists, and you need to alter that in some way in order to make the solution that you want. There are two ways to change the concentration of a solution. You can either adjust the volume of the solution or the amount of solute that's in the solution. So one of the most common things we do in chemistry is called a serial dilution. So we're going to dilute the concentrated acid or concentrated stock solution that we have in the cupboard. We're going to dilute that down to the amount that we need for a particular lab experiment. You want to decrease the molarity or decrease the concentration, and that's because the solution is too concentrated. The easiest way to do that is to add solvent to it. So imagine that you had, again, back to our Kool-Aid or our lemonade example, you had some lemonade and it was too concentrated. That's a really easy fix, right? You just take some water and you pour it in there, and now you've diluted it, you have it the proper concentration for your taste. The other thing you can do, and this is a little bit more difficult, is you can try to increase the molarity. So if the solution is too dilute, now with Kool-Aid or lemonade, that's not too difficult to do. You just add some more solute to it, right? That's this last one down here. You could just take a little more of the lemonade and put it in there, no problem. What is difficult to do though, is to remove solvents from a solution that's already been made. You'd have to boil off the solvent, and that's a pretty tough thing to do. When you're cooking, sometimes they'll tell you to reduce the sauce or reduce the liquid, and that's what this is. It's increasing the concentration or the molarity of the food flavor that's in it in order to make a more delicious sauce. But in general, we don't want to have to remove solvent from a chemical, mostly because heating it isn't always a really stable thing to do. For our purposes, we will either be decreasing molarity by adding water or increasing molarity by adding solute. That's what's permissible to do in our general chem class. So there's a formula to help with this, and the formula is C1V1 equals C2V2. C1V1 equals C2V2. And really what this is telling us is C stands for concentration. So this is concentration one, and that could be in anything that could be in um, parts per million or molality or molarity and the only one we actually know is molarity so we are always going to be measuring c1 and c2 in molarity so you may want to call it m1 v1 equals m2 v2 if that helps you where the m then would stand for molarity and v just like in all of the math that we've done uh, for most of the uh, semester V is volume, and it can be in liters or milliliters. So we're going to use either C1V1 equals C2V2 or M1V1 equals M2V2. Whichever one works uh, better for your brain is fine. But either way, the volume can be either in liters or milliliters as long as we're consistent. And our concentration should be in molarity for our class because that's the only thing we've learned. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and start a problem. So this problem is about me, and it says that I need to prepare a 500 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid, but she, me, I only have 12 molar hydrochloric acid on hand. What volume of the concentrated acid do I use to prepare the new solution? So we start with our given and our find. I need to prepare, so that's like the second thing. I need to prepare a volume V2 of 500 milliliters that has a concentration that's M2 of, or C2, one molar. Okay, so I want to make 1.0 molar of HCl. What I, I'm trying to find how much to put in, and the concentration that I have to begin with is 12 molar HCl. So these are my first values. Now, it might be confusing to you that I put the twos first and then the ones. It's because the problem happens to start with what my final concentration and volume should be. But in reality, it doesn't matter which one you call it. As long as the 500 goes with the one molar, that could be V1 and C1 or V2 and C2. It really doesn't matter. Our equation, C1V1 equals C2V2. 
And so then I just go ahead and plug into this. So concentration one is 12 molar times volume one. That's what I'm trying to find equals concentration two. I want one molar times 500 milliliters. So now I just plug this into my calculator. It's as simple as doing one times 500, which hopefully you already know is 500. And then that number divided by 12, which is 41.67 milliliters of HCl. So what this means, and I just wanna take a second to kind of draw this out for you, what it means, because it's gonna play a, a role in the next one, is that what I'm doing here is I have a container, okay, this is my stock solution. I have a container with 12 molar hydrochloric acid in it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour 41.67 milliliters of this 12 molar hydrochloric acid that's gonna go in here. And then I'm gonna add water until my final mark here is 500 milliliters. And when I stir that up, this solution in here will be a one molar solution. So that's what we mean, that's what we're showing, is I'm gonna take this 12 molar and I'm gonna put it in here, and then I'm gonna fill it up with water, I'm gonna dilute it. And once I've diluted it all the way up to a total volume of 500 milliliters, then my solution will be a one, 500 milliliters of one molar HCl. Okay, that's what it is telling me. That's what it's showing me. So there's one more problem to do here. This one's a little bit different. Um, so we have a chem student who accidentally pours 50 milliliters of two molar HCl into 200 milliliters of water. So let's start with V1 and C1. So my first concentration, which is C1, is 2.0 molars of, what is it, HCl. And my volume that goes with that is 50 milliliters. I'm supposed to be finding my new concentration, which is gonna be C2, that's my find. And the big question here is what is my volume two? So I want you to think about this. He pours, there's already a container with 200 milliliters of water in it. And then another container pours in 50 milliliters. So what will be my total volume at the end of this? My total volume, once the 50 milliliters has been added to the 200 milliliters, will be 250 milliliters total. So that's the tricky part. That's the trick to this one that you're supposed to be watching out for. Now that we have that trick passed, this is all gonna be really, really easy. C1V1 equals C2V2. That's the one we're gonna use. And so we go ahead and plug into it. 2.0 molar times 50 milliliters equals C2 times 250 milliliters. We're expecting a small concentration now, right? Because we've added a whole bunch of water to it. So 2 times 50 is 100. And then divided by 250 is 0 0.4. So my C2 equals 0 0.4. And then we have to put the correct unit it's still a concentration, its unit is molar. So that would be the answer to my second problem. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.